Uh, it's great to be back here. Uh, I was a first grader through 12th grader here, so I remember the Fieldhouse very well. So what I want to talk to you today about is kind of um, expose you to some uh, ideas and processes that we employ at Stanford in thinking about medical innovation. Uh, I think this is really important with the TEDx theme of design thinking, so hopefully, you, particularly the students in the audience will find this very useful in, in, in ways that you approach problems yourself. So you're all familiar with this. This is an iPhone. So if you're in the medical, medical industry and someone came to you and said, well, we need to innovate, we want you to solve problems, you may look around at the technology you have and say, well, I have an iPhone. That's really cool. I wonder how I could use this to help someone. And this, this is a very technology-focused approach. You may also have loved ones who've been sick. So you go and see someone sick, and if you look at that patient sitting there, or your relative or loved one, you may say, that person seems really sick. I wonder how it could help them. At first glance, these things may not be that different, but I'm here to tell you that these are very different approaches to solving medical problems and other problems in general. It really stems around this conundrum. Do solutions look for problems to solve? Do we use technologies and try to bolt problems onto them, um, which is one aspect of how healthcare costs, among other costs, go, get increased higher and higher? Or should we think about problems and really understand all aspects of a problem and then find the best way to solve them, which may or may not involve technology? I'm here to tell, tell you that in the medical field, we, particularly at Stanford, really think about let's understand the problem and figure out the best way to solve it. And I'll go through the process we employ, and you'll see that a lot of the techniques we use are, very, are things that you can employ in your day-to-day -day lives. So this is the Stanford Biodesign Program, and we really th have thought about this process of medical innovation in terms of three types of categories. Identifying problems, inventing solutions, and then implementing those solutions to make them realizable for patients. And I'm going to focus today mostly on identification and invention. So invention really starts with observations. Ob observations are anything any of you can do at any time. Um, in the medical field, they may start with going to an operating room and watching what happens, going to a, a procedure room, going with your grandparents or your parents, or even yourself if you're sick, to a medical appointment and seeing what goes on. Um, watching people at home who have health care issues. All of these things are ripe with problems which aren't solved well. We've all experienced them. I'm sure you have lots of family members who've experienced things which you wish, I wish it could be done better. But I think what's very, very, very important here and very consistent with a the TEDx theme and a, a theme of, uh, in, that's more prevalent in education these days is you really need to focus on the users. You need to focus on what patients are going through. You need to focus on what the people you see, what they're doing. You have common sense, you're bright, you can see a problem happening in front of you. You don't need to look it up in a book, you just need to watch. Uh, and it's also very different than just asking people, what are the problems in healthcare? If you ask a physician or a nurse or someone in healthcare, what do you think the biggest problems are? What they tell you may not be actually what you see. You have to trust your own eyes. So observations and really getting down into the ethnographic type of level to really see what's going on is very critical. So when you see these problems happening, for instance, in the upper right corner, that gentleman walking on the treadmill, he has a lot of wires. He could trip. There's a problem there. So what do you do? What's the outcome you want to think about? So that's really the next step. You've observed something. But what are the outcomes you want to improve? What are the things you want to make better? Improve safety? Improve convenience? Reduce cost? Accelerate the recovery of a patient? improve the physician's ability to use a product, um, improve the productivity of the healthcare system. These are all worthwhile goals. And what you can see here is that based on observations and user outcomes, we've talked nothing about technologies. We've just talked about needs. When you put these together, you have an observation that you've made, a problem that you've identified, as well as a, an outcome, as well as an outcome. <laughs> There's a need for a better clicker. So. <laughs> as well as an outcome that um, you've identified. And together, these together form basically an unmet clinical need. This is what we really try to think about at Stanford when we think about medical innovation and inventing new solutions. Um, really, what is the unmet clinical need? Not what's a technology, what's a problem? I put some examples here so all of you in the audience might be understand what are needs. These are all needs that you may have experienced yourself. I wish I could get my cold to go away faster. I wish I could stop coughing all the time if you're sick. I wish I had to have tonsillitis, but I don't want the surgeon to go in there and cut my tonsils out. Wow, I got, I got a deep cut. How do I stop bleeding faster? Um, 
my brother plays football. How do I know if he got, if he got hit in the head? Uh, you know, how can I assess if he had a head injury? These are all needs. These are all unmet clinical needs. They're both observations of a problem as well as an outcome. But these are all day-to-day -day things that you may have experienced. Forget about even in the healthcare system. I just put these to give you an example of what unmet clinical needs are. So now you have all these needs. What do you do? Typically, we take our fellows and students, we have them go into the operating room or the, or the clinical theater and spend weeks watching things, watching things over and over, seeing which things happen, oh, happen to certain patients, watching a patient move from when they first come into the hospital all the way through their pro progress to see what happens. And they come up with hundreds and hundreds of needs. So how do you figure out which are the ones I really want to work on? Well, you go back and do some research. You look at underlying biology of the diseases you're, 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 you're seeing. You look at the market. How many people do these, does the problem I'm seeing really affect? What's the incidence, the prevalence? We look at what are the treatments. You know, if there's an unmet need, probably the treatments that exist today aren't that good. So what is, what is the landscape? And you look at the stakeholders. If I solve this problem, will it help patients? Will it help physicians? Will it help the healthcare system? And most importantly, Think about your personal preference. Are there needs you're passionate about? Are there problems you saw that, for whatever reason, you can relate to and have good other parameters on these other axes that I mentioned? Based on all of that, and all of them, you, you might find two or three needs that you really like that have really good understanding of the biology, really good market size, and, and have treatments which aren't addressing the problem and that you're passionate about. In addition to framing the need, you also want to think about what else does the need must do? For instance, one of those uh, needs I talked to you about on the last slide, maybe it has to apply to all types of patients, from little kids to big kids. These are the types of must-haves. So now you have a few needs. What do you do? Now comes the invention part. This is what we do, and these are real examples from our brainstorming processes that we employ to solve medical problems to really build new products. The, the picture in the upper left is a group looking at uh, probably in the gastrointestinal tract, so you can see that they have a, a model of the, uh, of the human with an op open GI tract to see. On the right brainstorming, there's a, there was a, a need having to do with um, something having to do with the head and ear, nose, and throat, so we have lots of props so people can prototype and brainstorm together because sometimes when you use your hands and you, you listen to other people building upon their ideas, you, it's surprising what, you can, what can come about when you have all these props. These post-its are all these different solutions that we put together in a particular brainstorm, different colors meaning different types of things. And then in the bottom left is how do we categorize all these things on what we call mind mapping, putting them in organizing by different types of principles so that everyone in the room can say, oh wow, that's a really nice, that's a really interesting direction. We should go down that direction. But brainstorming is something you know, we're doing in the medical sphere, but this type of process and this type of approach to design thinking is clear is, is can be applied to many different types of, uh, types of activities. What's important is also in the upper left corner, there's a whole group of people sitting around the table, but they're all different backgrounds. Some of them are engineers, some of them are physicians, some are from the business world. It's very important to value the people with different perspectives because someone who's not initiated into your field, I oftentimes listen to engineers, they have better insights than me sometimes into medicine and vice versa because we're not biased. So it's very important to have that multidisciplinary equal thinking in solving a problem. So once you have all these problems, how do you figure out which one do you want to take forward? Well, you know, remember that those few needs that I said and you've articulated what must the need do and what must it solve? You'll find that in an open brainstorming session, a lot of, lot of, the, lot of the technology and solutions that you come up with are really cool, but they don't fundamentally solve all the elements of the need that you set out a priori. So you have to get rid of them. What's very important here that when you do this, maybe only one need will actually, or one concept for one need will actually meet everything you said it has to to solve the problem. And this is really, really critical because you don't want, we always fall in love with cool things, but you don't want to take that cool thing and say, well, this is close to solving the problem, but I like it really, so I will, I'll work on that one instead. No, you don't want to do that because if you were really true to this process and you understood everything that was important for the problem, you would stick with the one that really, really seemed to address the need the best. So the power is of, of what we do is really in this process. Really use what you have in your mind and your open-mindedness and a multidisciplinary group to find lots of problems. Narrow them down based on some understanding and then blow it up again with lots of brainstorming and then narrow it back down again. And through this iteration, we oftentimes come to really good solutions that at first no one would ever have thought up for solving the problem if they had gone by the technology route. 
So again, problems driving solutions is what I really want to leave you with. And what's important is that I would exhort you to identify problems and find solutions. And what's important is these are all examples of products that came out of our pro program and some of the companies I've started or been involved with. The bottom right say low cost ventilator. The upper right is a very low cost, long term cardiac rhythm monitor. The upper left is a, a devi in implantable device for spinal problems. The bottom left is for wound healing. I can go on and on. We have, we've spun out many, many companies and different types of projects. The goal isn't to spin out companies. The goal is to identify problems and solve needs. And sometimes you find something that's worth doing. But I would leave you with the, with this, with the statement that anyone can do this. So when you see a problem or when you see a technology, take a step back and think about what is it that I want to solve, and then go solve that problem. Thank you.